Actually, at some of my clients, they refer to me as the rock star of data, but I have to downgrade that when I'm in this august group. Good morning, everybody. It's really a pleasure to be here and with you today about a topic I am really passionate about, which is what's it really going to take for big organizations to get big value from big data? You know, as I stand here today and I look at all of you, I feel a little bit like it's a homecoming because this is a topic that I have visited over and over again in my career, both as a consultant and as a researcher. Um, and so as I think about it, though, I can't help getting a sense of thinking back to the very beginning of my career where I was incredibly fortunate to participate in a research project that was uh, having a series of conversations with Peter Drucker. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with Peter Drucker, he is known in business circles as the father of modern management. In fact, Peter Drucker was the first person to really define a business as a series of complex systems, all very interrelated. Peter was the master of understanding and looking at patterns and data. In fact, I think in many ways he would have been very much at home in this group. Because one of the things I learned from Peter Drucker in that, that time was that it's important to really understand the patterns. Now, Drucker had an amazing life. He knew everyone from Schumpeter to Freud to Jack Welch. And he had this wonderful way of pulling together all of these threads and streams and telling people in very plain language what the art and science of management was really all about. And so I really wanted to share with you a couple of things that I learned from that experience. Um, now, when I say I worked with Peter Drucker, that's not exactly true. The people I work for had a series of conversations with him while I got coffee and took notes. But I listened really hard, and I learned a few things that I think are significant and will help frame our discussion today. Number one, we do have to seek patterns, because through patterns we can get deep and original insights. Number two, businesses are complex systems, and that means that if you optimize a single element, it rarely creates sustainable value. You have to make sure the whole organization is optimized. The next thing I learned from Drucker was that we need to be patient. He had this wonderful way of talking about how um, Gutenberg might have been a goldsmith, and that led him to understand how to develop the printing press, which led to 17th century German banking, which led to the invention of the steam engine, industrial revolution, information technology, and here we are today. It all sounded seamless and flawless when he took it, but you know what? I'm no Peter Drucker. I can't do it as well. But the lesson to take away from that is we have to look at the big picture. He once said in an article that it took 50 years for organizations to get information technology and transaction systems right, to really figure out how to get sustainable value out of them. So we need to understand it's going to take some time to realize value from knowledge, information, and data. And the last thing I learned from Drucker that I think is critical to our conversation today is that these things don't happen unless someone is accountable and makes them happen. So his shorthand for that was what gets measured gets done. But what he meant was you need to plan, act, and monitor the outcomes because if you don't focus on the entire system, nothing's ever really going to change. Now, as I sit in this, con in this meeting today, I want to let you know I really do believe that business and big data are meant for each other and that big data analytics really is a game changer. Back when I was a consultant, you know, we always had these uh, requests from clients. They always wanted to do something that was always just a little bit out in the future. All those barriers of data and technology are finally gone. So I really truly believe this is your moment. The question is, are you ready to seize the day? And here's where I get a little concerned, because every conference I've been to, going all the way back to the mid-1970s, started out with the same kind of large audience expectations, breakthrough technology. I remember being at a conference in 1980 where they talked about all the data that was going to come down. We were going to have gigabytes of data, people. We were going to be able to someday analyze a thousand transactions a minute. It was huge big data back then. The numbers have changed, but the storylines haven't changed all that much. 
Back in the 1980s, excuse me, back in 1990, there was a very popular movie called Field of Dream. Again, in 1990, we had conferences just like this one about data warehouses, this amazing new technology that was going to allow us to transform the way managers made decisions that was going to change the world. Only, you know what? If you build it, they will come was a great mantra, and every conference speaker used it. If you build it, they will come. What they meant was, all you had to do is come up with the cool stuff and get the data, and if you had the right information in the right format at the right time, great things will happen. Well, you know what? I'm a fan of movies and a fan of movie history, and unfortunately, I think that's the wrong movie. The movie we're in is not Field of Dreams, people. It is Groundhog's Day. <laughs> we have to learn the from the patterns of history, I know this is an industry that doesn't like history that much, but the reality is that we've done a lot of this before. If we don't learn from the experience, if we don't do it differently this time, we're going to miss the moment. And I don't think we can afford to have that happen. Because realizing value for business executives, indeed for governments and organizations of all stripes, is absolutely critical, yet it remains elusive to many. And if you don't believe me, this is kind of distressing for me, actually, I first used this slide in 1998. The only words that are different are the ones in blue and red. The reality is executives know that they're just beginning to tap the potential that's in their data. They know there's a lot of information outside their organization that's useful. The question is, how are they going to do it? In 1998, an oil executive came up to me and said, you know, I think this whole experience, this data deluge, information overload, whatever you want to call it, is, is a little bit like going to an amusement park. There's a lot of smart kids who are dragging you onto this exciting ride. And they guarantee you there's going to be thrills aplenty. And it is. There's a lot of sharp rises and falls, hairpin turns. You get off. But here's the problem. At the end, you're a little bit queasy, you're a little bit poor, and you've arrived back at almost exactly the same place you were before. <laughs> so what are we going to do about that? Well, on the business side, the good news is executives understand that having lots of data technology and data scientists is just the data point. They need to make changes as well. And they understand to really unlock that power, the organization has to change as well. But there's one thing that we really have to do as an organization, and that is we have to understand that there's a journey that's bigger than just the people in this room. We have, from a business perspective, the need to take individual insights and turn them into organizational insights, actions, and outcomes. So how do we go from the business issues that matter through the data, analytics, and insights to organizational insights? So it's not enough of a data analyst that knows something. The guy who makes the decisions has to buy in, too. That's the first place where we have a gap. Because if there is one barrier, in my opinion, based on decades of research, to the widespread adoption and impact of big data, it's lack of trust. Now, I know when you go and meet with executives and companies, you, you meet with polite folks, you meet with people who are enthusiastic, but a lot of the decision makers are secretly thinking this. You know what? I know you think you're hot stuff, data scientists, but I'm accountable for business results, and guess what? You don't speak my language, you don't seem to understand me, you don't understand my business, you don't understand what drives success in my industry, and you know what? I just don't trust you or your fancy systems. We've got to find ways to forge trusting, collaborative, and effective working relationships with decision makers. And that means in addition to all the other things data scientists have to do, they also have to have business acumen, industry knowledge. They have to be able to communicate in the language of business, and they have to actually become a coach to these folks. So there's a lot of things that go into this, not the least of which is what our last speaker mentioned. You have to work on issues that really matter to them. Of course, we're going to need more than just great data scientists. We're going to need great data-driven analytical leaders, too. And they are out there. They are not universal, but they are there. And they are passionate advocates of data-driven decisions. But they have to set the tone, the culture of the organization starts with them, which means they have to learn to set 
examples. They have to make decisions based on data and follow through and make sure that they get results. They have to be willing to challenge people's assumptions, which often might be unda uh, unjustified. They have to be willing to hire very smart people and let them argue with them. So I think that one of the next big challenges is we have to develop a cadre of analytical leaders and a culture to go along with it. Now in our research, we found that we need to develop three new sets of managerial literacies, if you will, if organizations are going to really tap into the power of da big data. The first one probably doesn't surprise you. They have to become data literate. They can't just view the people who manage and analyze data as somebody off to the side who does something um, that they don't really have to know or understand. So they have to be a student finding, manipulating, managing, and interpreting data. The next thing they have to do is be willing and able to apply the principles of scientific experimentation to business. This is not necessarily a natural act in many organizations. The last thing they do, they have to be numerate. They don't have to be statisticians, certainly, but they have to have an appreciation for quantitative methods and be able to understand what it is someone is saying to them. That's the way we have to prepare our workforce for a more data-driven future. This means building an organizational capability. It means changes in HR. In a recent Avanade survey, um, managers responded to the question, Do your, does your organization lack the skills to leverage big data? 60% said their organization lacked the skills and data they need. So we have to hire differently. We have to build different kinds of career paths and requirements and expectations of managers as well. Now, big companies like Procter & Gamble have been prompted by analytical leaders like Bob McDonald, their CEO, to go out and actually create entire new skills inventories, rethink all of their job descriptions with this in mind. So there are organizations that are starting to do this. The question is, what can you do to step in and help them move this forward? And then finally, we all know that data is a strategic asset, but organizations need to start treating it like one. And there's things that you can do to help. The traditional view of IT talking about data management is, is really sort of, they think of it like a giant iceberg, you know? There's the things on the top that they can see, the data and the business questions and the analytics, and then underneath is all the ugly stuff nobody wants to deal with. The data management, the data cleansing, the quality, all the things business executives think of as kind of like eating your vegetables. They know it's good for them, but they aren't necessarily eager about doing it. Those are the things that need to change and evolve, because in a big data world, things like MDM or data cleansing take on a different meaning. We don't have the same control over data outside our corporations. So you need to not just ignore the folks in IT. The ERP systems still have to run if you're going to have a business, but we need to work together to define new guidelines and principles about data management. Then there's some business things we need to do as well. We have to find the data we need. If we can't find it, we have to start thinking about creating it. So if you can't get it, what can you do? Much like, for example, progressive snapshot device, that's a way to create data that no, did not exist. And then lastly, we need to partner with business executives to help them understand how we can monetize data, something that's going to be a $600 billion business just in the U.S. by the year 2015. Well, as I said at the outside, I've seen a lot of things over the years. There's no question in my mind that the barriers are down. The moment is right. This is your moment. Will your organization be ready? And what were you going to do to help them? Please, for my sake, I'm not your mother. Please don't make me come back in this room and tell you this all again in five years, okay? Great. Thank you very much.